hear the good news of Christmas. God reveals to us the wonders of divine love. People of God, through the coming of Jesus Christ, whose birth we celebrate, the Lord has comforted and redeemed us. Recall the words of the angels, good news, great joy, all people. In Christ, we receive the salvation of our God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. <laughs> from Isaiah chapter 52 verses 7 through 10 How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace who brings good news who announces salvation who says to Zion your God reigns listen your sentinels lift up their voices Together they sing for joy, for in plain sight they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, ye ruins of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God, the word of the Lord. Maybe 
the places that we might see ourselves being part of it. So we'll see how uh, Nen and Fox does this. It was the week before Christmas. Wombat loved Christmas. He loved the carols and the candles, the presents and the pudding. But most of all, he loved the nativity play. For as long as he could remember, Wombat had wanted to be in the nativity. Now at last he was old enough to take part. So with his heart full of hope and his head full of dreams, he hurried along to the auditions. His friends were already there. Uh, Emu was bossing and fussing as usual. Now let's get started, she said. Who'd like to be the Archangel Gabriel? I would, said Wombat. But he was too heavy to be the Archangel Gabriel, and he was going to be pulled up on a pulley at the evening. So the angel flying. Bilby was chosen instead. Uh, Bilby patted Wombat on the back. Never mind, Wombat, don't lose heart. Why not try for a different part? What a good idea, said Emu. Now who'd like to be Mary? I would, said Wombat. And so he tries to get on the, the makeshift horse, but he was too big to be Mary. Nombat was chosen instead. Nombat stroked Wombat's nose. There, there, Wombat, don't lose heart. Why not try for a different part? Right, said Emu. Now, who'd like to be one of the three kings? I would, said Wombat. But he was too short to be a king. The kangaroos were chosen instead. The kangaroos put their arms around Wombat. Cheer up, Wombat. Don't lose heart. Why not try for a different part? Wombat tried everything. He wanted to be Joseph, but he was too sleepy. He wanted to be the innkeeper, but he was too clumsy. He wanted to be one of the shepherds. But he was too short-sighted. And then there were no parts left. Wombat hung his head, and he hoped he wouldn't cry. Suddenly, the building leaped into the air. I know, he shouted, you could be baby Jesus. Could I, asked Wombat, could I really? Of course you could, Wombat said. He moved. Fancy my forgetting such an important part. A nativity without the baby Jesus is no nativity at all. Wombat was dizzy with pride. Christmas Eve arrived at last. Everyone was nervous, except Wombat. He lay quiet and still throughout the whole performance. He even fell asleep, just as a real baby would. On Christmas Day, when everyone was opening presents and eating pudding, they all agreed it had been the best nativity ever. You were divine, Wombat, said Inu, and Wombat beamed. Uh, let's pray. Uh, dear Lord, as we think about the nativity scene, yet once again, here the day after Christmas, uh, we pray as we worship you uh, that we might be able to see ourselves in that scene. Uh, we see the different parts that are there, and Lord, may we be able to play our part as well as we come before you, our King. So we pray this in your Son's name. Amen. Thank you for coming. Our next scripture lesson comes from Psalm 98. Uh, sing to the Lord a new song. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have gotten him victory. The Lord has made known his victory. He has revealed his vindication in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel, to the ends of the earth. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with uh, the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let the world and those who live in it, let the, the floods clap their hands, let the hills sing together for joy at the presence of the Lord. For he is coming to judge the earth and will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with equity. Well, and also from Luke chapter 2, verse 20, the, the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. I'll start off with a, a, a poem by Anne Weems, Kneeling in Bethlehem. It is not over, this birthday. There are always newer skies into which God can throw stars. When we begin to think that we can predict the advent of God, that we can box the Christ into a stable in Bethlehem, that's just the time that God will be born in a place that we can't imagine and won't believe. Those who wait for God 
Watch with their hearts and not their eyes. Listening, always listening for angel words. And we can see in Bethlehem. Well, this month has been a time of getting ready during Advent, culminating at the Christmas Eve service, which was wonderful. Again, thank you to all those that were part of that. And yesterday, with family giving and receiving of gifts and celebration, uh, with family maybe over the phone, or with Zoom, and all the new technologies. What a season. It also included watching Christmas movies. There are some great ones out there. Uh, perhaps you watched one or a few of them this last month. Well, I'm going to be using the story of a uh, scene from the movie Elf. I like the movie Elf. A film about a baby who ends up at the North Pole and is raised as an elf by Santa's elves. When Buddy, as an adult, he finds out he is human, he goes back to New York to find his biological family. His new found family reluctantly take him in, expecting him to fit into their New York lifestyle. However, the culture clash proves more than they bargained for. For example, Buddy still dresses like a North Pole elf. And his actions match the customs and traditions he grew up with. A favorite moment of the film is the scene in their first family dinner. The mom has served spaghetti. And as they begin to eat, Buddy asks, please pass the maple syrup. I brought some as a visual from our own refrigerator. We'll put it back there when we're done. Um, so please pass the maple syrup. It, it's spaghetti, she reminds him. Buddy doesn't miss a beat. He says, oh, I think I have some right here. And he reaches into the sleeve of his coat and pulls out a little bottle of maple syrup and proceeds to pour it all over the top of his spaghetti. Buddy does things differently than the rest of us. And although he is immersed in a different culture, he brings the foundation of what he knows with him in a childlike enthusiasm. Joy, peace, love, hope. Which is represented, if you'll allow me some poetic license, in that little bottle of maple syrup he pulls out of his sleeve. And he's not afraid to pour it out on everything and let it flow all over the place, even though everyone around him thinks he's out of his mind. So Christmas is our time to focus on Jesus, who brings hope, peace, love, and joy into our lives, and to bring that the foundation of what we believe in our faith into a sometimes strange culture. Perhaps you've tried to do that this year as well. Maybe you had resolved to bring the foundation of what you know into a strange culture. Perhaps you even started planning with great intentions. You may have thought, this year, I'm going to do it. I'm not going to succumb to commercialism and keep the real spirit of Christmas. That type of planning is great, but then the season hit. And sometimes, our resolve to do things differently. Well, let's say we have traditions that aren't quite met, mesh with our alternative Christmas, Christmas plan. Sorry. When cultures clash, we think, wait a minute. I can still put lights on my house, can't I? Or, how many presents are too many presents for the kids? That's something we wrestle with. One gaming system won't hurt, I'm sure some of you are asking. And I have these parties, people expect me to be there, and I have to pick something up for the people in my office. Uh, they all exchange gifts, and I need to stop off and get more wrapping paper, and some of those little meatballs everyone loves so much. And then there are the, all the Christmas cookies and the baking. And sometimes, by the time we get to Christmas Day, yesterday, it feels like your whole plan to keep the peace of Christ failed. But it doesn't have to. No matter how many lights you have in your house, and it looks like the Griswold family Christmas, or how many cookies you've baked, and the oven's still warm, maybe, or how stressed you feel, you haven't missed it. Even on this day after, and if you didn't know it, you have a little bottle of maple syrup up your sleeve. The first Christmas happened much like this one, amidst the stresses and busyness of life. Uh, the emperor orders a census, and never had to drop a balloon and make a trip to their hometown to be registered. Now imagine for a second what that must have been like. It's the equivalent of all of your extended family traveling to your little house, your, your childhood house, your brothers and sisters who moved to California or Maine after college, who now have three or four kids each, and, and your parents are there still alive, and certainly their remaining siblings, and their families, including the cousin you haven't spoke to since high school, they're all coming to stay with you. 
Joseph is among these relatives, and he shows up at your door with his pregnant uh, fiance that you didn't know was coming, and is and no small side happens to be in labor, grief. And on top of that, all the guest rooms, which by the way is the real word for the inn, and translated as no room at the inn, but it really means the guest room or upper room of the house. There's no room up there for them. In any case, the guest room is already full. Uncle Russ and Aunt Martha came in earlier this afternoon from Scranton, and she had a bad back, and she had some type of disorder, and needed the bed. Uh, so you tell Joseph and his about-to-give-birth girlfriend, fiancé, Mary, that they can sleep wherever they can find room, and it's the best you can do. There was a multi-purpose room, uh, often at the ground floor, that the ground floor that the family would hang out there during the day, but at night it would be cleared out and the animals brought in for warmth and shelter. The next morning, the animals would go back outside and the room would be swept and cleaned out and the family back in business. So the dog-tired couple, des desperate for rest, put up with the animals and the hair and the smells, and sure enough, Mary delivers her baby, and she and Joseph, the ones chosen to raise God's son, wrap their newborn in bands of cloth. And to tuck him in nice and cozy, lay him in a feeding trough. God's beautiful, new history-changing miracle in a manger, and the exhausted family drifts off to sleep. But in the middle of the night, there's this persistent knocking, and Joseph drags himself up and opens the door only to find a bunch of smelling probably as bad as the animals, shepherds, on the stoop. And he tries to place the faces as maybe distant relatives. Uh, every family has their share of shepherds. Uh, but they tell him they have seen angels. And they are here to worship the baby. And Joseph, who has had a visit from an angel himself, and has learned the hard way through his experiences to go with the flow, lets them in. And by now, the whole house is awake. And Aunt Martha puts on a pot of coffee and starts stuffing the turkey. And Uncle Russ turns on some music. And the kids break into the cookie tins and the leftover cheese and crackers, and it's a party. And in the middle of the room, in the middle of the ruckus in his makeshift cradle, the Christ child sleeps. And folks go by every now and then to ooh and ah and to kiss Mary on the cheek or grab a cigar from Joseph for the equivalent, and perhaps even whisper a prayer of thanks to God for this miracle that is barely hours old. And some may recognize that the Savior of the world has just been born into their midst, and some have no clue. But life continues. The gathering continues. The celebrations continue. The culture continues. Later that afternoon, when the football game is on and everyone is munching on nachos, Joseph will look knowingly at Mary, and he'll take a little bottle of maple syrup out of his sleeve, and he'll pour it on top of whatever the world offers. And he and Mary will share Christmas for the first time. This is why you haven't failed at keeping Christ in Christmas, because Christ is Christmas. Regardless of whether we show up at the door in the middle of the night after a divine encounter with a host of angels, or shuffle through the whole experience more concerned about coffee and food and whatever else, Christmas will always be about Christ. And you know why? Because Christ won't take you out of Christmas. You are the reason there is a Christmas. You're the reason that Jesus was sent here in the first place. Because of God's great love for you. Because of God's great love for us. For God so loved the world that he gave God's only son. For God so loved each one of us because God loves. Jesus came to earth, bringing with him the foundations of everything he knows. Again, love, peace, joy, hope. And truly I tell you, that God loves you so very much that this month, or yesterday, or today, or tomorrow, and every single day that you're willing, and even when you're not willing, when you're stuffing turkeys and singing carols, or buying gifts for families in need nearby, or around the world even, or returning gifts to the store, as this week may be, or going a second or third round of family gatherings, as we've been talking about this morning, or watching the game, whether you're thinking about Christ or not thinking about Christ, a hand is reaching up into the inside of a sleeve and pulling out a little bottle of maple syrup and is pouring its contents out on everything and letting it flow over all the place. Merry Christmas. 
Our next hymn is hymn number 23, Angels We Have Heard on High. Uh, please stand and join in the singing as we sing this hymn.
Um, if there are no other uh, prayer requests, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, dear Lord, we want to thank you for Christmas and for the celebration that we get to have every time that we return to the manger, and not just at this time of the year, that this can happen at any day and any time. Lord, thank you for the images, and may they be able to help sustain and renew our faith as we go forward. Uh, Lord, as we do that with one another, uh, whether it be the Christmas Eve service, um, Lord, uh, continue to prompt us in these ways. And not just, again, for that story, but the rest of the stories as well, as we find and follow the faith that you have given to us. Lord, thank you for those ways. Thank you for the ways that we continue that this morning and uh, with our families as we go from here. Uh, Lord, we certainly pray for all those that are traveling, uh, whether they might be yes, with family right now or will be with family this week, uh, celebrating Christmas with one another. Um, we pray for uh, all the different family members and relationships, and may they be strengthened and enjoyed and reflected upon and move forward in ways that are glorious to your kingdom work. Uh, Lord, we want to thank you that we get to do that with one another and also with family members that we will be with and relationships in the community. Uh, Lord, we certainly want to lift up these prayer requests as well that weigh on our hearts even as we participate in such a wonderful story of Christmas. We lift up the Stoddard family and for their needs and individuals uh, that are dealing with different things and relationships. And so we pray for um, the needs that they have. We pray for Sherry Myers and pray for her continued health uh, and uh, for those that uh, are in the Myers family, uh, for the congregation and those that are uh, surrounding them in love, we lift her up to you. We pray for Pearl Kuhn and her continued uh, rest and rehabilitation and health, and we pray for the Kuhn family as they are surrounding her in love and enjoying this Christmas season as well. We pray for Brent and the strengthening of his dream, and he might be able to uh, turn a corner and be able to see a different year than this last year or the ones before. And so we lift up his family as well as they're seeking his health and well-being as well. We lift up Jim and his health and Cindy taking care of him and his spirits during this difficult time. And, uh, Lord, we ask that he'll be able to, to get on his feet and, and, and be doing better this next year as well. We pray for uh, the struggle of COVID-19 as our world is now entering into another year uh, with this. And we pray for all those that are, are fighting this virus and this disease. And we pray that their efforts will, will, will be uh, fruitful. So we do pray for vaccination efforts and all efforts, seeking to protect individuals and, and families and neighbors, states, nations, the world. And we pray that that will be able to be done um, effectively. And so Lord, we will continue to pray for uh, those efforts. Lord, we want to lift up this prayer request we heard this morning uh, and for the, Lord, the passing of Jamie. And we lift up Jim and Ed and all those who have been affected by this. Uh, we with the family even during this time uh, dealing with the difficult uh, uh, um, remembrances and uh, going through sadness and all the different emotions uh, that are part of this time. We lift them up to you. Lord, we also want to uh, pray for the, those that have been affected by the, the passing of Desmond Tutu this morning. Uh, for the ways that he's been able to, to help out that country and be an example of truth and reconciliation and um, bring about um, confession, forgiveness, and restitution and restoration to so many of the people in this country. Uh, the Lord, we we'll thank you for those that have risen to the level of the Nobel Peace Prize and uh, for the legacy that they might be able to impart to others. May you find more people like him being able to do that and also in different ways that as your spirit directs and guides. May we also be able to, to lift up and do the things that we might be able to be called to do as well. Lord, as we look at the end of this year, may we be able to reconcile with those that we get, you are calling us to be reconciled with. Do not let the, the days go by where we don't do that. Or where we be able to amplify the love that you have in, in us and give that to other people. Lord, as we think about this next year and how we want it to be an even better year than this last one, this, the big struggles that we've gone through, uh, we pray that you might continue to guide us as individuals, as families, as a church, uh, that we might be able to be 
impactful in your kingdom as you guide, as we might be able to find ourselves um, as part of the great adventure of the life of faith that we have partaken of and look forward to as well. Uh, so Lord, thank you for this church that we get to do that at and with our neighbors and those that are not yet part of this church as well as we see them and invite them to be part of this here at First Presbyterian Church in Monticello and our work around the world. Lord, thank you. Lord, we also want to pray for any prayer requests we haven't heard out loud. Uh, be in those situations and relationships, uh, certainly around this time of the holidays as all that gets kind of amped up with more interactions. But we do pray, Lord, that those will be um, filled with peace and filled with love and, and laughter. Uh, be with us as we do our part to be part of that as well as we listen to you in those situations. And so, Lord, we also want to pray the prayer that you taught your disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As part of our worship this morning, we have the opportunity to be giving our tithes and gifts. Um, we do have the plate in the back, and if you feel so led, especially if you're watching online, you can send something to the church. Uh, during this time of hearing the offertory, let us offer ourselves to God. children, bread and wine to feed and nourish us 
ordinary people to be disciples, a child in a manger to announce your grace. Take these commonplace things as well, our gifts of paper and metal and, and numbers, that the lives that stand, the lives that stand behind them. Bless and use them to proclaim your gracious love, for we offer them in the name of Jesus, the Lamb of God. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 38, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear. Anticipate miracles knowing that with God all things are possible. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us both this day and always. 